The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. But right now, I want to get to our guest. Uh, like I said, he's no different, I feel, than any of our forefathers who sacrificed their time and a lot of times their lives uh, to really bring this country forward. And I'm talking George Washington and, and the rest. Uh, they were patriots. There were people out there uh, uh, with no shoes during the winter. They had to eat their leather shoes to uh, survive because they cared about what they were doing. They had conviction and they had character and so many don't have that anymore and that's why I'm really glad to have this gentleman as a guest tonight and I really hope everybody supports him, gets behind him, rallying cry for what he believed in. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Lakin, good evening. Well, good evening, John. Thank you for having me on the show. Oh, you're quite welcome, uh, Colonel. I know there are certain things that uh, we can't talk about because you're not formally discharged uh, but I'd like to uh, get in, uh, you know, on your trial and your incarceration. And uh, that was, I would imagine, the first time you've ever been in prison, correct? Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, first time any, anything close is getting in trouble with the law. Um, and, um, you know, it was just a, I, I expected a lot worse, um, but I tried to use it as a valuable learning experience. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's turned out to open up some other doors for me, and, and uh, you know, I'm seeking out other directions of how to put that into a positive experience to me. Well, I, I know that you're a doctor, and uh, you were you refused to be deployed for reasons that, uh, you know, we, we, I, I can get into later. I know you can't talk about it because you haven't been uh, discharged yet. But, uh, you know, what about your incarceration? What about the people that you met in, in uh, prison? Where, where were you in prison at? Uh, what, what facility? Well, I, I ended up uh, within two days of being taken into custody out at the uh, Joint Regional Correctional Facility out at Fort Leavenworth. And, and I, I did learn the facility um, had only been open uh, since for about three months prior to my arrival there. And... Uh, it was a facility to take in military prisoners. Almost all of us were Army at the time uh, that had sentences of five years or less. And then just down the road from us was the detention barracks at Fort Leavenworth, which is where the uh, people with five-year sentences and longer are housed. Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about, or tell our listeners a little bit about uh, the people you encountered in prison uh, what were most of them in there for, and, and um, uh, you know, how do they feel about uh, being in prison? Well, I, you know, it, there was a large range of uh, of other inmates. Um, I would say that I was just astonished at how, uh, how you know, how non-threatening they were. Um, you know, we all had sentences of less than five years, so it was, you know, mostly, if not, you know, majority of nonviolent crimes and uh, you know most of the inmates were looking for positive out um, positive outlook of things they, they wanted to seek out some schooling they wanted to do pro productive jobs they wanted to feel productive inside there but uh, this being a new facility they had um, not really started up an educational program that was very uh, robust and and the most of the jobs were you know, pretty menial task, um, just taking up taking up time, and and uh, so uh, you know there was a lot of uh, you know old, or inmates were looking for something to do. They were seeking out the library and and reading up uh, reading all the books in the library, and and we also had a very good religious media center, which um, a lot of people were seeking out for um, movies and and books related to religion. I understand you uh, helped some of the prisoners. In what way? Well, uh, you know, I, I was definitely the highest-ranking uh, inmate there. Um, there was a couple other officers, but I, uh, you know, I'm a quiet guy. I didn't want to try and, you, you know, it's not a situation where you can uh, use your rank at all. In fact, uh, we have, you know, privates and, and privates that are guards, and they're, you know, ordering you what to do all the time. Um, but I did, 
add my voice uh, into trying to improve the educational process there, and I volunteered to teach courses from you know the first week or two that I was there, and and uh, shortly before I was released, we were finally able to get a, a at least a math course that was kind of equivalent to a GED math course or a college preparatory uh, course, and I, I think that was the start of them starting to do a, another math course and an English course to get ready for some college courses for the inmates. Now, when uh, you got, uh, what was your sentence? How, how long was your sentence? Uh, uh, I was sentenced to six months, and then uh, w w every month we, if we stay out of trouble, we're given uh, five good conduct days off, and then for our employment, uh, if we, you know, work 80% of the time during the month and we're, we pretty much get one day per month off of our sentence. So my six-month sentence was essentially a five-month sentence. Five months. Were the other uh, inmates aware of why you were there? There was only a couple that knew right off the bat. Um, certainly several of the guards indicated that they knew and you know, just to, even upon my reception there, um, several of the supervisory guards told me they knew why I was there. And, and um, but it's a it's a place that's under cameras and microphones all over the place, and you know, people really don't aren't able to speak freely um, without you know the, the fear of being on a camera and and tape recorded. Wow, so it's like Big Brother watching you. Well, it is. Not too much, not too much different than outside the prison. Uh, um, now, when you got out of prison, uh, did you get a lot of support from people? I, I, you know, when I came out publicly about this, uh, it was just kind of a firestorm of emails, and and certainly after I got taken into custody, um, I, I, I arrived at the facility a little before Christmas, and I started receiving... 10, 20, 30, sometimes more um, letters per day uh, over the holidays, and just very touching, um, touching letters from people and and people telling their stories about how scared they are that something like this is actually happening in the United States. Yeah, now you you have certain restrictions. Like I said at the beginning, uh, how long will that uh, be maintained? Uh, when will you be formally discharged? Well, um, you know, it's kind of two pathways. I can I can waive my appeals process, and they will uh, the army will discharge me and and take the final sentence of a dismissal upon me as soon as they can finish the paperwork. Um, I'm looking at appealing this also, and the appeals process would could run six months to 18 months or maybe even longer and in that status I would still be on active duty but essentially on excess leave and uh, you know have to uphold my um, my status as an officer to the military okay Colonel, we're, we're coming up on break and we're, uh, we're going to be getting into uh, a medley by uh, Sonny Turner I think you remember the platters and if you'll hold on, uh, we'll be right back after the break. If you'd like to call in, the toll-free number is 800-596-8191. If you want to call in and talk to a great patriot, and I'm talking somebody very few of us would do out there. I don't know if I would do it. Uh, you know, lose your uh, rank, uh, lose your uh, pension. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know too many people that would do it. But, uh, again, the uh, toll-free number is 800-596-8191. And uh, call in. And we'll see you right after the break. Welcome back to America Betrayed. Uh, going into the break, we had the great Sonny Turner uh, with his medley of the platters. And uh, Marty Ballin, uh, who was supposed to be on the show tonight, he has a, a new uh, album out, or uh, CD, I should say, uh, called The Witcher. If you go to his website, www.martyballin.net, uh, take a look at his website. He's got some tremendous music there. He'll be back on the show uh, probably next week. And uh, uh, like I said, two of the greatest singers of all time, uh, Marty Ballin and uh, Sonny Turner. Um, but uh, before we get back to the colonel, I'd like to uh, bring in Marco. Marco is an associate of um, uh, the colonels. And uh, Marco, is there anything you'd like to fill in what the colonel can't talk about that you can? Absolutely. And thanks for having us on. 
Yes, one of the things he really can't discuss much is obviously his position and that he still feels strongly about his actions. And as uh, Jack Cashel said on the on the show yesterday, Terry has never specifically said one way or the other what Barack Obama's eligibility is. He just wanted to know. And, you know, we still don't know, and people should be very concerned about that. Now, you mentioned earlier as well that Terry has made a huge sacrifice, and he has. And, you know, since Obama released the supposed long birth certificate, the contributions to the Terry Lincoln Action Fund just dropped off precipitously. Uh, we've continued to be able to provide some um, money for them. They've been using up what little savings they had remaining after the trial. And Terry has some opportunities for work, but none of it will start till September or beyond. And so I'm asking on behalf of Terry for people to go to terrylakin.com, that's L-A-K-N.com, and, uh, and consider just making a small contribution, just at least for the next couple of months till he is employed, and we'll let you know when he's employed. And then the second thing that he probably won't want to talk about himself is this book that we're working on, and it is very exciting. Again, you can go to terrylakin.com. You can click on the big banner at the top of the interview yesterday with Jack Cashel. It's going to be a very exciting book, much different than many books in this space, with not only Terry's story, which itself is wonderful, but probably 18 to 20 vignettes of key people who have helped him and come alongside him, and anywhere from six to eight uh, extended essays on issues relative to this issue, as well as some art and humor of the of the issue. But, of course, it isn't really that funny because it's a very serious issue. So, again, appreciate you having Terry on tonight and just asking those who are listening to please go to terrylakin.com, consider making a small contribution, read up. You'll see that he has done something extraordinary on behalf of this country. So that's what he won't say. So let's take it back to Terry. Well, uh, Marco, just one question. If the colonel is still active duty, don't they have to pay him? If not, is an active duty without pay slavery? That's an interesting question. I'm not sure if we call it slavery. It is interesting that he is still not discharged, as you said. He's not actually on active duty. He's on appellate leave. But what's kind of strange is he technically could be called back up if there was a national emergency. Uh, but... Uh, yes, it is a kind of a strange situation. He has no pay. You know, his pension was revoked. Um, a few minor health benefits remain, but they will uh, end. So basically he's, you know, on his own and uh, has to start over again. But he took a principled stand on behalf of the nation and one that more people should take. Uh, it's a very, very complex situation. But really at its core it's so simple. I think the public should be demanding from the Congress and Senate to get this issue resolved instead of having wasted so much time on it. But we're not wasting time because it's very, very critical. And Terry's right there at the core of this issue, and uh, I'm pleased to be involved with this project. Well, it sounds like you're uh, doing a lot for the colonel. Like I said, I, I don't know many people that would do what uh, the colonel's done. Now, as far as uh, this long-term uh, form birth certificate that came out, uh, we know that's a total uh, forgery, uh, fraud. Uh, there were certain things in there that right off the bat a five-year-old could figure out. But we do have some news. On the next hour, we're going to have uh, Orly Tates on the show. Uh, uh, Orly has uh, a subpoena, uh, judge to order a subpoena of Obama's uh, long-form birth certificate, the original one that the health director said she saw uh, a while back, uh, the handwritten one. Uh, they have until August 3rd. Uh, I, uh, you know, I feel that uh, this guy using, uh, saying that we're, we're, he's going to cut off Social Security. I mean, there are, there are people out there, that's all they depend on. And he says he wants to cut that off. I mean, come on. I, I, I just, uh, well, right now uh, we've got a caller, uh, William from Alabama, and we're going to see what William has to ask. And uh, if, he, if the colonel can't answer it, uh, Mark, I appreciate if you would answer it for him, okay? No problem. Yes, uh, William, uh, good evening. Good evening. Um, I just wanted uh, Colonel Lakin to know that I'm one of his supporters and financially support him during his trial. My question is, is he considering running for office? We sure need heroes like him. Well, thank you, William. William, I, you know, I, I've, I never say absolute no to anything, but, uh, you know, it's... Not, not, in the, not in my near future right now. Um, 
you know, I, I hate being in the public eye, really. I, I am a, a quiet, reserved person, and uh, I enjoy being a, a team member. But, uh, you know, if, if the opportunity arises in several years, then, you know, certainly I'll consider it. And well, John, let me interject. I'll be uh, hopefully considered to be in your camp and would campaign for you and donate to your uh, campaign run if you do it. I supported Duncan Hunter in his presidential bid, and we need good military men uh, to watch over this country, just like George Washington. Now, did you want to comment, Marco? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I, I know where Terry is coming from, and he's correct. He is extremely um, quiet about what he's done. But I'll tell you, just listening to him over the last few months, I think will he probably will run for office someday. So hang in there, and uh, we'll see what happens. God bless, okay, Terry. William. Yes. William, does that answer your question? It certainly does. Okay, well, thank you for calling in and supporting a, a great patriot. Really appreciate it. Thank you, William. Thank you for your program. Oh, you're, you're quite welcome. We, we need to get the truth out. You're not going to get it from the mainstream media because it's controlled media by various sources. I think you know who they are. But, um, Colonel, uh, what, so what's your, you're a doctor. Uh, do you plan on going into a private practice uh, when all of this is done? Or, uh, and like uh, William said, possibly running for office, I think that would be a great idea. Uh, we do need uh, honest people like you. There was only When I worked in Washington, D.C., I only knew uh, maybe three or four that were like you, that were honest. And, and believe it or not, a couple of them were doctors, but one was also Sonny Bono, who was an entertainer. He was completely honest. All he cared about was this country. And I, I just got the feeling that you're that type of person. I mean, I've seen pictures of you and your family, and boy, what a lovely family. And, and the sacrifices that they have to go through because, uh, you know, and just been standing behind you, your beliefs. And I, I really have to applaud you. And I, I don't know anybody today that would do it. If anybody knows it, uh, you know, bring them forward. Uh, Sonny or John, uh, if you know anybody that would make those uh, sacrifices. And we're, we're, we're going to get to the bottom of it. But I, I just don't like somebody saying, hey, we're, I'm going to cut off Social Security checks. I know old people out there that are barely functioning. And if their Social Security checks uh, are cut off, they're done for. They have to eat dog food so they can afford to get their uh, prescriptions out there, their me medication. So I really, uh, really don't like that. But, um, uh, Sonny, you got a question for Marco? Yeah, because the Colonel, uh, there's certain things he can't uh, answer. You got a question? I just want to know why they're penalizing this gentleman and uh, this uh, officer who served this country. And uh, I didn't get the uh, full understanding of why they, you know, why he was penalized or sent to jail. I know that uh, you, you know, you have a right to speak up, and uh, that's what America's all about. Even if you are in a uniform, you know, I know you that you sworn to uh, obey the military code. That uh, looks like your gentleman that served uh, with honor. And, uh, they're punishing you for some reason. I don't understand. So, Marco, do you want to answer that, or would you like me to? Um, I, I can answer it, and Terry can even answer this a bit too. But Terry, as you know, on a YouTube video, stated very clearly that he was going to disobey a direct order to deploy, and the charge is called missing movement because when you order an army to go, it needs to go. And Terry chose to do that with the hope that the court-martial would allow discovery and would therefore would allow the issues and the facts about Obama's eligibility to come out. Instead, as those of you who followed the case know, all discovery was denied. And as it proceeded to the court-martial, Terry went without a defense. So did he uh, do a chargeable offense? Absolutely. Should he have been court-martialed and put in prison? No because the solution was so simple. And, of course, subsequently, as you mentioned earlier, John, about this long-form birth certificate, I mean, for months, even leading up to the trial, they just kept saying, all we have is this little short-form thing. And then, lo and behold, they came out with this long-form thing, and it, of course, is completely suspect. And so, you know, the whole premise of Terry's case, of course, is just really unfortunate and really a problem. But nonetheless, there he is. He's served his time, and he's going to get on with his life. And, 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 John, for you and your listeners, too, I mean, Marco summarized that great. Uh, except 
for the year and a half prior to my deployment orders, um, I had started a process of trying to ask the military internally um, using a process called an Article 138 under the UCMJ, which is a complaint that you can file against your command, and um, it's supposed to be without retribution, but I tried to craft up um, these Article 138 complaints through two different chains of command, and the replies that I got just, um, you know, were, were lacking. Um, it, it made me lose faith in my leadership, and I also sought out congressional complaints, um, and all that the congressional leaders did was, um, you know, just file those complaints over to the military who gave me the same response. That, you know, one response was that my complaint uh, was addressed against President Obama, and he had no UCMJ authority over him, so therefore my complaint was deficient, and they didn't have to reply to it at all. Um, uh, another complaint that I went through, another chain of command, was that the chief of the chief of staff of the army was not in my chain of com chain of command, and and he had therefore no obligation to answer my question, and and I I wasn't seeking out an answer for me. I was a uh, asking for them to just come out with a public statement saying that this problem is resolved or that this is not a problem because of this. And um, uh, when I sought out uh, my congressional leadership, um, I met with uh, several senior staffers and, and I got a lot of nods of the head saying we know there's a problem and we try to do something about it, but the media wouldn't gain traction with the media, so we didn't know what to do after that. And um, and that just, uh, you know, that that ate at me that something else uh, needed to be done. So what uh, what's uh, what I'm uh, hearing here is the Commander-in-Chief is immune to the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Is that what they say? I, I that would be, because he's not really part of the military directly. He's a civilian side, but but yes, of course, it was part of the problem. Is I think uh, we, uh, some friends of ours, did a cartoon when Terry was applying for a medical license recently, and the list of items he had to do. And Terry, you're, to just continue on with the employment process, you have to do like another thirty pages, right? I, I did, yeah. Right. <laughs> it's just crazy, and I mean that's important. But here we have the president of the United States, and the guy can't even, you know, prove even a little bit. <laughs> He's eligible. So, yeah, the whole thing is just kind of unfortunate. Yeah, there's a lot of things happening. I know a number of congressmen and senators. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering if I contacted them and um, see what they can do. I know, I know I've, I've gotten the same uh, song and dance up there. Uh, either they're afraid uh, to do anything or, or um, they're, they're, they're part of the problem. Uh, our whole government uh, has been... Um, hijacked by these elements uh, that are just in, insidious, absolutely insidious. Now, I've had uh, Ted Gunderson on the show, former head of the FBI office in Los Angeles, and uh, he just said it's all been taken over by the Illuminati, which really caught me by surprise because I had investigated the Illuminati many, many years ago, and I wrote him off as some, uh, you know, uh, something like James Bond Spectre. Uh, but uh, here was, you know, the former head of the FBI saying that they, they had taken over. And um, I, I'm just really definitely afraid of uh, where our country's headed. And, uh, you know, it's it, Obama's just a figurehead. I mean, he's being used. Uh, but, uh, like I said, when, when they somebody threatens to cut off money to old people, that's all they have. I have no use for that pe that person. None, none whatsoever. And I guarantee, you, if he does that, uh, there's going to be a really serious problem in this country. Serious. And I wish people, uh, these politicians, all of them, the Republicans, Democrats, are they're no different. They're up there uh, for themselves, uh, stay in office. And that's why I, I'm fighting uh, with the Sonny Bono thing, trying to get Sonny's body exhumed to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that. He was assassinated because he was, it was the same way as the colonel. He would not compromise his his uh, character, not his character, but uh, you know his beliefs. He believed in this country and he wanted justice. And 
and they and they kill them for it. Um, now, is anybody aware of the progress of the states that have made in the requirements for eligibility for the next election? Well, each of the states that has tried, in one way or another, it has been thwarted, uh, either on a technicality or it wasn't ratified or it wasn't signed by the governor. And it's really quite extraordinary because one of the things this whole issue has brought out, John, is that every state has laws regarding eligibility, as Maryland does where I live and Terry lives, and yet there simply was no prescribed method for confirming eligibility. And it's amazing to me that states are even resisting this. We're talking about giving people fiduciary and legal responsibility at a federal and state level, and we don't really care uh, if, they're, if they are qualified and eligible. I think that is just ludicrous. And so people need to be bombarding their state legislatures on this. Well, they have to. My concern is if he remains at such a president, that means a person like Arnold could get in there. And, oh, God forbid. I mean, uh, he ruined California. Uh, but, uh, you know, that means anybody can go into that White House. That White House was sacred for a long time. I mean, I... I know what our governments have done all uh, in the past, uh, going back to JFK and uh, all the different assassinations, dirty work, and I would imagine the colonel seen some things happen. Um, colonel, uh, where, where were you deployed? You were deployed over in the Middle East for a while, weren't you? Yeah, my most recent deployment had been in 2004-2005 uh, to Afghanistan, uh, part of the Operation Enduring Freedom, uh, the five, fifth iteration of that. Um, I was with a great unit, with a, a cavalry unit. We we uh, were in Kandahar for a little while, patrolling the whole province, and then uh, we jumped out to the Iranian border and and uh, pretty much patrolled all of the western section of Afghanistan for a while. Do the people want us there? Are they glad we're there, the people of Afghanistan? I, I We rolled around to several small villages um, throughout my whole stay there and I you know I, I, I like the people I think they you know they needed a lot of help um, certainly they wanted a lot of help but I'm not sure um, you know that the, uh, they're, they're a different kind of culture that they don't um, they don't understand freedom or or democracy or the rights they they just have immediate needs at that time, and if you're there to give it to them, they'll take it. If um, you know, if, if you cut them off, then you know they're not going to be your friend tomorrow. So, uh, uh, I, I, did you did you have any uh, close encounters? And I'm not talking about UFOs. I'm talking about you know close uh, combat. Uh, uh. No, I, I I can say I didn't take any direct fire. Um, there were several cases where I, you know, our unit was certainly rolling into something that we thought was going to be bad and um, you know there's several other you know near near mishaps just in your regular duties of patrolling but you know out um, there were there were some potentially bad guys that we were out chasing out on foot several times or we were out in remote areas uh, with four vehicles and you know considering we were going to get ambushed at any time but uh, my unit was particularly lucky um, you know, just missing that by several hours several times, too. Oh, well, that's good. I'm glad uh, you made it through because, to me, you're, you're one of a kind, uh, uh, Colonel. Uh, like I said over and over, uh, very few people would do what you do. You gave up your uh, commission. You gave up uh, your pension, everything. Uh, and I, I really hope, and like William said from Alabama, he hopes that you run for office. I hope you do, uh, because the country needs uh, people like you. I wish Sonny Bono was still around, because he was a great patriot. Uh, he cared about this country. That's all he cared about. So many of these uh, politicians, all they care about yourself. Like you said you went up and talked to them in, in Congress. They, they're not going to do anything they don't have to, and uh, they're not going to rock the boat. But uh, let's see if we can't rock the boat. Uh, I'm, I'm going up to D.C. Uh, in a short period, and... Uh, see what we can do. Maybe do something for you, Colonel, because you really are a great guy. I know you helped a lot of people out there. You probably helped a lot of people in prison and also out on the, on the field out there, being a doctor. I mean, 
my brother was in Vietnam. He was the first Air Cav Lerps. He was a, a medic with with that group, and uh, I know what he went through. So I really uh, have to applaud you guys. Uh, you're out there defending us, but I I hope that's the reason why we're over there. You know, to stop them coming here. Uh, Marco or Colonel, could you give your website uh, one more time so people can go to your website, take a look, and also donate? I really feel that people should donate to you. You're not one of these fraudulent uh, organizations out there, some of these Tea Party groups just asking for money. You really uh, deserve it. You need it. And uh, this, like I said, the next hour, uh, Orly Tastes, I hope uh, she's going to be able to bring forward this uh, uh, true birth certificate. There is a subpoena out by a Hawaiian judge to provide it by August 3rd. If they don't, they're going to go to jail. So uh, let's hope we can get to the bottom of it. Uh, so why don't you give your website? And um, Sure. The, the website is, the short form is just terrylakin.com, T-E-R-R-Y-L-A-K-I-N.com. It'll take you to the Terry Lakin Action Fund website. And there's tons of information there. There's background around Terry. There's all the radio shows we've done. There's a place to donate, all kinds of information. And we hope people will go and check it out. The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.